Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. What's today's topic? We're going to discuss anti-splatter or slag spray gel, uh, however you want to term it. Which one's better to use? Um, well, let's first start off by going through a checklist. Check, well, this is assuming you're going to begin to weld. So, like in the last video, let's check your roller. I'll show you a picture. Okay, so the next thing is, is I take a look and I decide on what I'm going to do for wire speed and amperage. Now, this is all dependent on the particular machine that you own. So, you have to take a look at those things or estimate what you want and go ahead and set up your machine. Now, the next thing you want to do is check the chart on your welder if you're unsure about how to set things. Most of them have a chart on there depending on the thickness of the material or what kind of material it'll tell you what to set your wire speed at and what to set the amperage at. From there when you're welding you can reach over and just tweak it a little bit to your liking depending on how the welds going. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you got a good clean surface on your welding table cleaned off for your grounding clamp. Now, let me show you what I do. Give me just a sec. Okay, so I have my grounding clamp, I have the area clean. Take your grounding clamp with the wire part that's attached going down from the top. You don't want it going up through a bunch of dirty material or thick material or anything from the bottom. This is going to create a better grounding. The closer to the project you can get it, the better, or if you can put it on the project, that's just as good. It's actually better. Just make sure that you have this spot clean so it's got good, good contact. Next thing is make sure the steel that you're going to use is weld prepped. What do I mean? Clean it up. Use a four and a half inch angle grinder or whatever you have and clean it up where you're going to make the welds. The cleaner it is, the better your welds are going to be. So that's your next tip. Now, the next thing is right up here. We went through this in the last video. Make sure your shield's clean. Make sure you have a good tip on there. Make sure that you've taken your MIG pliers like I showed you in the past two videos with that round hole in these Harbor Freight MIG pliers and you cut the wire to the correct length by lining up that hole with your MIG tip and just grip like that and then there it is the wire is at the perfect length sticking out you don't want it flush you don't want it way out here Okay, so now at that point, so you're ready to weld, and now you're wondering about the anti-splatter, or anti-spatter, I guess I should call it, and whether you should use gel or spray. Now, I have both. Each one serves a particular purpose for me. Now, you can get away with one or the other without a problem, so I'm not going to endorse one over the other, really. But I will tell you the gel will last you longer in terms of keeping, you know, that spatter off the inside of your MIG shield and your tip okay now the spray works equally as well you're just going to get more out of the gel than you will the sprays but I have the spray for other reasons too now one of the other reasons is here's my welding table so let me show you what I do now I just cleaned this off a little bit ago to a pretty good degree I always take now I have a can of Radner this is expensive stuff it is not cheap it's probably more expensive than most of the sprays you're gonna buy I'll leave you the link below I get a huge, huge discount, so it's not that bad out at air gas. Air gas sells it. But there are plenty of anti-spatter um, sprays that you can buy, and I'll leave you the links below. But what I do is I just take this, and here's my welding table, and I spray it all over it, just like this. After I've sprayed it all over, I just take a blue shop towel and I just wipe it.
That's the way that I do it. Now, why would I do that? Well, because if I'm welding, any of these little spatters that land over here, I can knock them off with a glove, like it'll tell you in a lot of literature that you read. That's what's nice about the spray. You can also use the spray on projects. I mean, where you spray the metal that's surrounding that weld area. Don't get it on the area that you're going to weld. Surround it, okay? And then when you're done welding, all those little spatters, you just knock them off. And somebody made the comment, well, you could also use a four and a half inch angle grinder and a flap wheel and knock them off too. Yes, you can. And if you're going to clean up your metal afterwards, I suppose it doesn't matter. But it's another good use for it. The other thing is I will spray up inside of my shield and around my tip. That keeps all that spatter from collecting in here too. So if you're going to be doing any welding other than just like hit and miss, you're going to want some type of anti-spatter, whether it's gel or whether it's spray. The gel will work if you take this nozzle here. You have to wait till you're welding for a second and it's hot and then you dip it in the can of the gel. Now it's like a real thick grease gel kind of material that comes in a can. Let me show you a couple of pictures. Okay so you saw the picture so you wait till you're welding and this thing gets real you know it gets hot and you dip it in and this is how far. Well, probably about, I don't know, half an inch, give or take. That's all you need. Don't bury the thing down in there. And then I read a comment where somebody was having a ton of trouble until they realized by dipping it too far down in there, it starts to plug up the little gas ports where if, you know, you're using shielded gas, it's not coming out like it should and therefore your wells look kind of crappy because you buried it down in there. You don't have to. You just barely set it in there. Like I said, somebody made a comment three quarters of an inch. Okay, well, I don't want to debate it. I just dip it in real quick. I don't measure it. And I know that I'm about a half an inch, give or take. It works fine. And I don't get that buildup in there, in and around, you know, my tip or my shield. Now, the question was, is like, hey, handyman, um, in one of the forums, there's this debate on how often you should dip it when you're welding. Well, I don't know. If you're continuously welding or you're just doing some intermittent welding or whatever you're doing and somebody made the comment, well, like every couple of hours, well, I think that's too long. I always look at the tip and I would tell you if you're welding on a project, somewhere between 15 and 30 minutes, just keep glancing up in here at this shield and this tip in here and see, okay? And if you think that there's nothing there anymore or whatever, it's not going to hurt anything. That same can of gel will last you years, okay? So it's a really, for value, it's a damn good purchase, okay? It really is, because it's going to last you a very long time, without a doubt. And just dip it in there whenever you think, or dip it in as frequent as you want. Just don't bury it in there, and you're going to be okay. All right, let's move on to some other questions. Okay, so like I said, there's lots of sprays out there. Radner is only one of them. I'm not endorsing this in particular because it is expensive to buy. If you run across a good discount on it, I would tell you it's probably better than most. But they, uh, they all work the same. Now, the gels. I mean, now that's a different story. You're going to read both pros and cons, I mean, over these gels where some people say they suck. But I always look at the reasons why they say they suck. Sometimes you're just not using the product correctly, okay? Or hey, you know, spraying the welding table, it doesn't help you with spatter. Well, it does if you do it correctly. I clean my bench off really good, as best I can within reason at first. Then I coat it with this anti-spatter uh, spray. I just spray it all over it, wipe it down just like I showed you earlier. And then anytime those little, you know, nibs land on there, they just knock right off. And I don't need to worry about grinding them off. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Same thing with the inside of your tip and shield. Okay, so there are plenty of products out there. Um, just be careful on the reviews because sometimes people are just misusing them. But there's a lot of good ones out there. You know, I mean, Hobart makes them. Lincoln makes a really good spray. And I think it's only six, seven bucks a can.
Okay, so can you use this on any other type of welding? Well, you can use it on, let's, let's stick with MIG welding, and you're using gas. Well, of course. Um, what about if it's flux cord? Yeah, you can. But now if it comes to arc welding, TIG welding, oxyacetylene, plasma cutting, well, no, you don't need this. So um, it's not going to help you. Um, not that I know of at all. So steer away from it. You'd be wasting your time. Real good for any kind of MIG welding, though both products. Now what makes it so good? Because you don't burn up your shields and you won't burn up your tips as fast, meaning the tips that you buy and the longevity that you have in using them is going to be much, much longer if you use the anti-spatter spray or gel. So, like I said, if you're going to do any kind of welding at all, you really need it. It's almost a must. Just get a good quality product. Lincoln makes them, Radner makes them, Hobart makes them. There are lots of off-brand manufacturers that make them, and I can't tell you which one of those are good or bad because I haven't owned and tried all of them. But the ones that I'm showing you pictures of and talking about, I have. They work fine, especially the Lincoln and the Radner and the Hobart. Um, what if I'm welding and it's a getting into a hard-to-reach place and I don't want to spray this and get it on that weld seam that I'm trying to weld? Well, use a Q-tip or use one of the acid brushes from out at Harbor Freight you know, spray some into the cap or whatever and just hold the, you know, hold your finger on the thing, build up a liquid, use a Q-tip, use the acid brush, swipe it on and then get in there with your MIG and do your weld. Um, I'm not saying you can't weld if this gets on that joint or seam, I'm just saying it's not a good idea, it's not a good idea, I would practice not doing that. Does it hurt when the wire's sticking out if you dip it into the gel? Um, there are people that can make the argument, well, it's, you're, you're contaminating at least that portion of the wire that's sticking out. I haven't ran into an issue at all with it, so... Um, any suggestions on vapor masks? 3M vapor masks, let me see if I can find a picture. That's what I have hanging up over here, and that's what I use. But you want to make sure it's a vapor mask. Alright folks, well um, there wasn't a whole lot to tell you when it comes to anti-spatter spray and anti-spatter gel. I have both because they're not expensive. Uh, I like to have both on hand. You can get away with one of course, you can get away with just the spray, you can get away with just the gel. Uh, I use both like, you know, in the ways that I was just discussing with you. So. It's up to you on what you want to buy. I will leave you the links below. I would encourage you to click on the links. Um, take a look at the reviews. Take a look. When you do click on the links, it's going to bring up a lot of other products, even some of the off-manufactured products. Take a look. You might find something else that's a great deal. You want to try the product. Remember, if you're on Amazon, pretty much everybody is nowadays. It ships prime. You know, there you go. I mean, it's a good deal. So I'm the Home Handyman. I hope you click subscribe. I hope you keep following me. I hope these tips helped you. Let's review real fast and I'll end the video. Check the roller inside of your machine. Make sure that you have it set right and the tension's right and there's no dirt or gunk in and around those rollers. Come up to the tip. Check your tip. Check the wire that you have it cut right. Everything's clean. And then check your settings. Check your amperage and check your rate. And if you're not sure, look at the big table of contents. It's pretty much on every MIG machine. It will help guide you how to set it up and then you can go from you know there on tweaking. Those things will help you enormously. Remember the grounding clamp right here. You want a clamp to a clean surface and you want the grounding right here where the wire is on the top going down. Best ground or on the project. Okay and so then you weld prep and then you're ready to go. If you do all these things or you establish that protocol inside of your head, your welds are going to come up stronger, better, and more consistent every time. And as you practice welding, you'll learn to reach over and tweak your machine, whether it's the amperage or whether it's the rate or both or whatever. You very gradually will learn to do better, better, better. But let's say you're first starting out and you're a beginner. Follow these steps. Your welds are going to come out damn good. They'll come out fine. The rest of it's just practicing. Okay, I'm the Home Handyman. Click subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you keep receiving the videos. We will keep switching between wood projects, metal projects, and product reviews as things come up. I hope you folks have a wonderful day. I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.